Getting your FTC robot to reliably see and use April tags can feel complicated, but it's one of the most powerful things you can do for your autonomous routines. We can actually see that we move forward and back. Today, I'm going to show you a straightforward way to code your Limelight 3A in Java to get that data and make your robot more consistent on the field. I'm Coach Pratt, and as a robotics teacher for over a decade and having mentored national champion FTC teams, I can tell you that a solid visualizing processing like this really does make things simpler for your robot. First, I'll walk you through setting up the simple wiring and configuration file. Then I'll walk you through the code you need to pull that core data, your target X, your target Y, and your target area. And finally, we'll talk about what this data actually means and how you can start applying it to control your robot's movement. So connecting the Limelight to your Rev Control Hub is super easy. Of course, you plug in USB-C. And then on the other side, you make sure you have to plug this into the USB 3.0 port on the Rev Control Hub, which is the blue USB port. So make sure you plug this in on the blue side, not on the black side. I just was about to plug that one into the black one. So while that gets set up, we need to set up a robot configuration file. So we're going to go ahead and click on the meatball menu. We're going to click configure robot. Choose the configuration you're going to use. I'm going to make a new config file here. And then right now, only Control Hub is going to show up. You need to go ahead and press Scan. It's going to scan for devices, and the Limelight is the Ethernet device. So we'll pop on that. We'll go ahead and we'll delete this Ethernet device, and we'll rename this as the Limelight. This is not actually the IP address of your Limelight. This is actually the serial number for your Limelight. So we'll go ahead and choose Done. You go ahead and save this. And I'm actually not going to save this because I don't actually want to edit this. Then once you have this, you're going to click activate. It's going to restart your robot. And then it's going to talk about what device is actually connected. Now let's head on over to Android Studio. So over on the code, uh, there are actually two ways that we can uh, get localization on our robot working. We can either use Megatag 1 or Megatag 2. Now Megatag 2 requires you to have the IMU set up on your controller, but it will give you more accurate localization routes. So we're going to go through Megatag 2 today. So I'm going to go in my team code. I'm going to make a new class. I'm going to call this one April Tag Limelight Test. And we are going to extend the op mode as usual. And then, of course, our op mode always needs two public methods. So we're going to make a public void init and a public void loop. Now, for my limelight, I'm also going to make a public void start. Now, the limelight takes quite a bit of energy, so I actually don't start limelight up until we have the start button being pressed. So that helps us reduce that a bit. So inside our initialization, let's go ahead and create that limelight object. We're going to go ahead and make a private limelight 3A object called limelight. And then inside of our void init, we are going to say that limelight is equal to harvermap.get, and we are going to get the limelight3a.class with a comma, and then in quotation marks, we're going to call this one limelight. And again, this limelight needs to be exactly as you wrote it in that configuration file. Otherwise, this won't work. We're also going to switch our pipeline at this point. So we're going to say limelight pipeline switch. And in my case, my April tag pipeline is pipeline number eight. So you're going to have to pick which one this is. And this is my April tag number 11. If you're looking for a full video on how to make sure you do that pipelines, I've got that down in the description down below. Now, when we press the start button, I'm going to go ahead and say limelight.start. Now, if you find that there is a little bit of delay on your limelight starting it up, you can go ahead and run that in your initialization statement as opposed to on your start statement. Just keep in mind, it's going to drain your battery a little bit more. But if you find there's delay, take this out and move it into this point here. Now, in order to get our Megatag 2 as opposed to Megatag 1, we also have to go ahead and initialize our IMU. So we're going to make a new private IMU called IMU. And we're going to go ahead and initialize it inside of our init statement. So we're going to say that IMU is equal to our harbormap.get. And this is a IMU.class. And on almost all control hubs default-wise, it's called IMU. Now, if you want a full tutorial on how to use the IMU and set that up, I've got the links in the description down below. So we're going to go through those pretty quick. 
we're going to say that the RevHub orientation on robot called RevHub orientation on robot is equal to a new new RevHub orientation on robot. This takes two arguments inside. We need to have our logo facing direction. And in this case, I'm going to make mine up, put it a comma, make a new line. We also have to have our USB facing direction and minus facing forwards. Then of course, we have to actually initialize the IMU. So we're going to go IMU dot initialize and we're going to initialize with a new IMU dot parameters. And the parameters we're going to put in are our rev hub orientation on robot with a lowercase because it's going to be this specific object here. Again, if you want a full tutorial on the IMU, take a look in the description down below. So now we can actually get our localization set up. So in order to actually get Megatag working, we have to get the current heading of our robot from our IMU and then pass that into our Limelight uh, results to be able to uh, get our latest localization point. So we are going to say that a new yaw pitch roll angles called heading, oops, we'll call this one orientation, our IMU dot get robot yaw pitch roll angles. Then we will actually update our robot orientation. So we're going to say limelight dot update robot orientation. And we're going to call this one with our orientation dot get yaw. So this is going to tell the limelight what our current yaw or what our current heading is. Then we can create a new result. We'll say that limelight result called limelight result is equal to limelight dot get latest result. And that is the line that actually pulls the data from our limelight. Then in order to actually get that point out, we can say that if our limelight result is not equal to null and our limelight result dot is valid, that means you've got a valid return. And the first time that you pull the limelight, it will likely return a null point. So we do that double check, just kind of a safety point. Then we can say that a new pose 3D called bot pose is equal to result, oops, limelight result dot get bot pose mega tag two. So now we can actually use this data on, on bot pose. So let's say that telemetry dot add data. Then we can say that our target X is equal to limelight result dot get target X. We can go ahead and do the same thing for telemetry.addData. We'll get our target Y. We'll say target Y is equal to limelight result dot get target Y. And we'll do the same thing for our target area. So I'll we'll do our telemetry.addData. We'll say that the target area is equal to limelight result dot oops, get target area. And that's it. We'll go ahead and pull this into our control hub. We'll go to compile this and let's take a look at it. Now, if you did not want to use your IMU, uh, what you could do is you could just go ahead and mitigate these two. And rather than saying get bot pose underscore mega tag two, you can just say get bot pose and that will pull in the mega tag one data. Now, just for clarity, I'm just going to be holding a limelight here for now. You do not want to be directly face on to your limelight. That's going to end up giving you inaccurate results. So for this test, I'm going to be holding this with our hands, so our driver station is probably going to be giving us some random numbers here. Or not random, but not very stable numbers. Your robot would be giving you stable numbers in this case. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at our driver station here. We're going to open up our autonomous, and we're going to open up the Limelight April. We'll go ahead and initialize this, and we'll run it. And now we can see that our target X is 27 millimeters away. Our target Y is 13. Our target area is 17% of the limelight's camera, 9%. And then our bot pose gives us our position as our target X and our target Y. And then it also gives us our yaw, our pitch, and our roll. Our yaw, our pitch, and our roll, of course, will not actually show up, but it will show us our heading in relation to the April tag. So we can use this bot pose to be able to grab our yaw. Now, if you just want to get the yaw instead of from this whole bot pose, you can go ahead and use data bot pose dot get orientation dot get yaw. And that will return just your robot's yaw or just your robot's heading in relation to that uh, April tag. So that's how you set up a April tag setup in the context of FTC using Limelight 3A. We can see it's really simple to get it started. Most of these projects with a limelight are going to need less than 10 lines of code.
Now, it is up to you at this point to figure out what you need to do with that data. So there is some documentation on Limelight where now you can know uh, how far away you are from an object or not from the Apple tag, but also your point of interest. So now you know how far away you are. It's just a little bit of simple uh, mathematics calculations that I will leave a link to the description down below, but how you can calculate how far away you are so that you know you need to move your robot in space and rotate. Now you can either get one data point when you look at that April tag the first time or look at the April tag and then, of course, your offset target of interest, which I suggest you do in the previous video. Then you can just go ahead and calculate to move your robot right there. Alternatively, you can set up a bit of a PID so that you can constantly look at that April tag until the last time you see it and then move yourself up to that point of interest so that you don't lose that over time. It's up to you about what route you are capable of doing and which route you choose to do as well. It's not necessarily that one is better than the other. Again, always focus on that pragmatic approach. What ends up giving you the best result might not necessarily be the most complex code. And sometimes, in my opinion, the simpler code is better. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Quick edit here from while I was going through and editing this video. I recognize that my explanation was not super fantastic there. Effectively, all you need to do is... If you want to do it the simplest way possible, once you capture your April tag, you know what your target X is, you know what your target Y is, or your target area. The easiest way of doing that is once you know what your target X is, you simply just have to move your robot until that target X is at roughly zero. So that means you're directly in line with your target X. Then you can just move your robot forward until that target Y is in line where you want that target Y to be. Alternatively, you can use the target area. So how much of your screen that April tag fills up. So if your target area is like 3%, it might be something like this. If your target area is like 50%, it might be something like this. And then it fills up 50% of the camera vision. So I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer them for you. Otherwise, best of luck out there this season.